Hi, and thanks for joining me. This is the first in a series of tutorials about PM standards and how PM and their associated standards might affect you. First, let's get a little background on what PM is and discuss some terms and definitions. We can all appreciate what pollution is, and specifically pollution that's in the air, referred to as particle pollution. Well, particle pollution is also known as particulate matter, or more simply, PM. While the term PM is simple, PM itself is a relatively complex mixture of extremely small particles and liquid droplets that float around in the air. When we breathe them in, these particles can reach the deepest regions of our lungs. An exposure to particle pollution is linked to a variety of significant health problems, ranging from aggravated asthma on one end of the scale to premature death in people with heart and lung disease on the other. And particle pollution is the main cause of visibility impairment in the nation's cities and national parks. This is where the EPA gets involved. To protect our public health and welfare, the EPA issues national ambient air quality standards for six criteria pollutants, and particulate matter is one of these. The EPA first issued standards for particulate matter in 1971. As we learn more about pollutants and the effects on human life, the EPA continues to tweak the standards in the best interests of society. The last revision to the standards were made in September of 2006. The revised 2006 standards address two specific categories of particle pollution, fine particles and inhalable coarse particles. Fine particles are called PM 2.5 because their size is 2.5 micrometers in diameter and smaller. Inhalable coarse particles are called PM 10 because their size ranges from 10 micrometers down to larger than 2.5 micrometers. The 2006 standards define how much PM 2.5 and how much PM 10 are allowable within any area in any given 24-hour period of time. The standards also state how much of these are allowable within an annual period of time. In our next lesson, we'll discuss specifically the allowable amounts of PM that the EPA regulates.